Hi everybody. So today we're going to be replacing the battery in a Nielsen Kellerman Cox box. And this thing is, uh, it's built really well. I think this one's about 12, 13 years old. Um, but the battery no longer really makes it to the end of a practice anymore. So it's going to be time for replacement. All right, so let's go over what we're going to need first. Uh, to, before we get started, what are we going to need to replace the battery in here? Now replacing the battery is probably going to take about an hour. Um, if you've done a few of these, I'm sure it'll take you a little less than an hour. And your first time through might take you a little bit more, but I estimate about an hour to, for the total project. Um, so first question is what type of battery do we need? So the battery inside, um, this is the battery from an older unit that I did before. Um, you can see it's got a date of 2005 on it. So basically it's a, it's a rechargeable six pack of AA batteries. Uh, this particular one was a nickel cadmium. Um, it's now kind of hard to find nickel cadmium batteries anymore. I'm sure they're still out there. Um, if you read a little bit about nickel cadmium, it does have memory issues associated with it. But more commonly, a lot of the batteries nowadays are nickel metal hydride, which I have not had problems with replacing uh, the other battery pack with this one. So what you're going to look for is an 1800 milliamp hour 7.2 volt battery pack. Now it's really when searching for this it was had a little trouble finding it. Um, really all I want is the battery pack with two wires. Now I don't necessarily need this connector thing but most of the ones you'll find out there have some form of connector just because they're made specifically for uh, certain types of toys that they come with. Um, the they range in price this one i got for about 10 bucks um, i couldn't find it on amazon um, or maybe on amazon there was something like this it just but might have been like 20 or 30 bucks because it had some type of specialty connector so eventually i found one that was about ten dollars you might be able to get them cheaper at some place but uh, it had to be it had to come from china so i almost gave up uh, it took a while to get here. It took about maybe two months, so um, you could maybe have better luck with other websites trying to get these. But in either case, uh, this is the type of battery that you're going to want to order. So give yourself some lead time to get these. Uh, and, you know, if you do a lot of replacements, you're going to want a few of these on hand. And the nickel metal hydride batteries uh, are a little superior to nickel cadmium in that they don't have the memory issues. Uh, like the cadmium ones do, so they will uh, last a little bit, they also last a little bit longer. Um, so that's the battery that, that you're going to want to order that's inside of these. So the other things that you're going to need are uh, wire clippers uh, to clip the, wi the, the wires of the old battery. Uh, you're going to need some screws, and I'll show you in a few minutes uh, what we're using. These are number 6 by 32 machine screws. Uh, these are about an inch you might want inch and a half might be a little bit better but these ones will get the job done um, these are actually going to be used to push the whole unit out of the bottom of the can uh, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver you're going to need some wire strippers you are going to need some solder and a soldering iron this is a specific uh, solder for electrical use it's non-conductive non-corrosive so it's this is the stuff that you want to use for electrical purposes once you twist the wires together so the soldering is probably the most technical thing as part of this job uh, it's not that hard but if you haven't done it before you can twist some wires together and practice on a few before you do it on this one just to kind of get the hang of it but um um, it's not too bad just getting the solder in contact with the iron and melting it over the wires. Uh, I also use some uh, some liquid electrical tape. Once the wires are together, you're going to want to seal it in nicely, and this does the job. So no water, or I mean, if water or any moisture gets inside, it's not going to corrode out the corrode out the wires. And the the battery pack inside uh, it it'll have a pad and a silica pack 
attached to it. So I'll use some, I'll pry the ones off the old battery, use some tape to tape, uh, tape those back onto the new battery. And so I'll use some electrical tape for that. And you're gonna need some zip ties, some six inch zip ties. You're gonna need four of them to be exact. The, the battery that's in there is held in place with zip ties and then you have to cut it to get it out. So you're just gonna need four of these to put the new battery back in place. And that's about it as far as parts go. So let's get started here. First thing you're gonna to wanna to do is this uh, piece it's around the top of the rim here. Should just pry, pry right off. Just going to take that off and set that aside. Um, next, you're going to see that the ends of this nylon rope for the handle here is just kind of melted on the inside. So all we're going to do is just uh, we're just going to snip that off, and then later when we put this back on, we're just going to melt the end of it to uh, um, put the handle back on. So try to cut off as little as possible. Um, that should just pop right off there. So I try not to do both sides here. I just do one so then I can just pull the, uh, oh, it's a little, little stiff here on this one. I should just be able to pull this plastic handle off. Okay, so this one see was a little bit of a bugger to try to get off. The plastic is usually just slides off, but this one is um, almost like it's melted on there. So I'm just gonna resort to clipping off the the other end here, so we can get this out. Not the end of the world. Okay, so now now that you got the rope off, the top off. Now we're gonna undo these two screws at the bottom and just use our Phillips head. side. So now we're going to take our the longer screws that have the same thread on it and I'm going to put these ones back in the hole because then what we're going to do just screw it in just a just a little bit. What we're then going to do is we're going to push down on these screws and then the whole unit will slide out of the can. Let's get these on. Just enough to thread it in there. I'm going to kind of turn it upside down and just kind of work this down a little bit. Um, hopefully this just slides out. It's going to take a little, a little bit of force to get it down. So it's starting to move a little bit there, um, but it might help to use a piece of wood on the top here just on a push down more evenly. It's a really tight fit to get it out because there's a gasket there. So we'll push this down. See it's starting to come out a little bit there. Um, I need a little bit more length on my screws to get it up more. Let me just undo these just a little bit more. Oh, I'm kind of near the end of my thread. It's an inch and a half probably work a little bit better. Uh, all right, so let's push down just a little bit more. This will be near the top. Okay, so we've got this at the top here, and then we can now grab this, just pull, pull right out of the can, and then you can see the inner workings of our of our Cox box. So right inside here is the existing battery that we're going to take out and replace with the new one. So the first thing we want to do is uh, clip those zip ties to get the battery out. 
and uh, just be really careful you don't accidentally disturb any of the other wires so find a find a spot in there where you can get at that zip tie with the wire cutters and clip that there's one Let's see if I can get the other one And there's two. Now the battery should be free. Pull it out. And there it is. You can see here's the battery here. Uh, there's the wires there. We can take out the... Essentially what we're going to do is we're going to clip these wires as close as we can to the battery pack so we can have as long a lead as we can and uh, well this battery is a little newer than I thought it was going to be but still about 10 years old it's been doing a pretty good job for 10 years though uh, so there's this pad on the bottom and then there's this silica pack so we're going to take both of these off carefully because we're going to reuse those again. Take that off and then we'll try to get this uh, silica pack off without tearing the side of it. Okay, that wasn't too bad. Put that aside and uh, there's our old battery. One thing I noticed is that these uh, the new batteries are considerably lighter than the uh, nickel cadmium batteries, but not that that's going to help our boat speed too much by being a little lighter, but just one thing I noticed about the batteries. So next thing is now we'll clean out these old zip ties here. Pull that one out and get the other other end should just pop out. Just being careful not to disturb any of the other wires. There we go. Okay. So the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to strip the ends of these two wires and we'll strip the ends of the new wires here. So now that I've got my wire stripped, I stripped them back maybe about half an inch or about a centimeter for my metric friends. And um, while I'm doing this, I've got my soldering iron heating up. So it's good and hot when I'm ready. So we'll just take uh, red to red. We'll just twist these together. sure they're good and twisted together and then we'll take black to black of course twist those ones together make sure we don't cross the streams crossing the streams are bad if you're over 40 you'll get that joke okay so Got them twisted together, and now I'll let my soldering iron finish heating up, and then we'll be ready to solder. So if we have any soldering experts out there, I apologize in advance. I don't proclaim to be an expert at soldering, but I'll do the best I can. All I know is make sure you don't get the soldering iron too close to the battery, because hot things and batteries do not play well together. I'll just leave it at that. So we'll just heat up some of the solder here. Okay. 
Okay. It looks like it'll do it. It'll let that cool. Okay, so now that our solder's cooled off a, a bit here, we'll just do a double check. These batteries come with a little bit of a charge to it, so it does turn on. So it does appear to be working. So the next thing we're gonna do is take our liquid tape here and it's going to be a little messy to work with um, so you could potentially use a different brush or tool to put this on but make sure you get a copious amount of liquid tape here on each joint so that it seals it in nicely Put that on and we'll just let it dry for a few minutes. This stuff doesn't take very long before it becomes solid. Okay, so my wires are all set and then I took that pad and I put the pad back on the, the battery here and same thing with this uh, silica pack and just use some electrical tape to tie it on there. Um, so we're all, steady, all, all ready to put it all back together. Um, so you want to get your zip ties and the key here is before you put the battery in, you kind of want to slide this, there's two holes in the bottom, or uh, two on one side, two on the other side. You want to slide these up and then over loop it first and then, uh, then slide the battery in. Then what we're going to do with, uh, with one of these other ones, all we really want is this end piece. So we're just gonna take this end piece and we're gonna just snip it off here. So now I'm just gonna use slide this small little end piece on the end on the other end on the bottom uh, once I slide it through. So we've got a battery back in place. It's a little finicky kind of trying to slide it in there under those zip ties. Uh, just be careful you don't mess around with uh, or don't disturb any of the other wi wires that, that are in there. Um, and then get those zip ties down fairly snug so the battery doesn't slide around at all. It shouldn't really move in there. But now we're, we're basically all back together now. The only thing left to do is just slide this back in the can and put it together. Um, now the one thing I'll do is I'm going to add a little bit of liquid tape right around the ends of the holes uh, so that when I slide it back into the can it tries to make uh, those uh, holes waterproof as much as I can a little bit and I'll maybe I'll dab a little bit on the screws as well to seal up that hole um, and then we'll we'll slide this back in all right so I got a little bit of liquid tape around the the screw holes there and now I'm ready to slide it back into the can now make sure when you when you go to put it into the can you want it you want it lined up pretty precise because once you get it down in there it doesn't really twist so the the key here is just trying to line up these screw holes on the front or right here with the holes on the side just to make sure that when you push it down it goes straight down and then we can get the screws in there so it looks pretty good right there um, now this gasket that's around here fits really tight to make a water seal watertight seal on it so you gotta work it just a teeny bit here to get it down in Gonna apply a bit of pressure. Obviously, don't don't want too much. You don't want to break the glass on the surface. There we go. Looks like we're aligned. Push it down the rest of the way. Make 
make sure it's kind of going straight down in. And all the way down. So well, it looks like we're lined up pretty good down at the bottom. So I'll grab my screws that I had here originally. Put them back in the holes. It's there. We'll do the other one. And then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to dab it. I'm going to dab the screws with a little bit of liquid tape again. Or you could probably use some kind of silicone if you want. Uh, something to kind of waterproof that hole again and before you screw it all the way down tight and then that'll be back in place we'll just get these screws tight okay now i'll just wipe off the excess of that liquid tape should work so the only thing left now is just the you got to put the uh, rim piece back on and then we will uh, add our uh, handle back here and we'll just we can slide it in and then just melt the ends of it a little bit um, to make that lip again on the end of it and it'll be all done and hopefully this will last for another 10 years till we have to do it again. So my other uh, speed coach has been going on 25 years and it still works as good as the day I bought it, which is uh, pretty good for most electronics. So well done, NK. Um, and um, this thing will be good to go. Thank you.